How about to but judge? And I'm so blessed and glad in my heart to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, and I know one thing God is manifesting His love in your life. Praise God. He said that to us that in this month, He is practically demonstrating or manifesting His love in us. Now, what does that do to you? Expect miracles this week. Expect miracles this month and onward. Expect God to do things that it will be clear to you that these are the doings of God in your life. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, like the Lord has commanded us to do, can we make demand for our daily bread? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Release your faith as one who is expecting the love of God to be made manifest in him. Praise God. Join me now as we say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, if you look at the Bible, now, this is one important book that have been handed down to us. This is a book of record. This book contains men that have encountered God and their experience with him. And everything written in this book is true. Praise God. It's true. Now, I know some people have this mentality that God was dictating scriptures, you know. You know, say, look, Jeremiah, sit down. I want to dictate scriptures to you. Take your pen and write. No, that's not what happened. Jeremiah was just kind enough to write down his encounters with the Lord. Isaiah was just kind enough to write down his encounters with the Lord. Ezekiel, the same thing. Everyone that have penned down the things that are written here, and some things were just gotten from history, and, and, and because people decided to pen down the things they experienced, the saw, and the learned. Now, all this compilation, God moving men, I believe, to put these things together, and it formed this book called the Bible. Now, today we look at it as one book. Now, forget about right now the things that are not there because, because anybody who tells you that this is the only book, uh, 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 now they are getting religious. Praise <laughs> God. No, it's not. There are many books that could not enter into this one book. And not that those books were lies. They were not lots of books of truth. Now, imagine even the, 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 the 12 apostles of Jesus. Now, let's remove Judas. And maybe because his heart was not right from the beginning. We praise God. So, 11 of them, if they were to write their own experiences with God. Think about it. So, we have, we have all other disciples, apart from John and Matthew, who did not write their experience with Jesus. Now, Peter later wrote, what about the other fellows? See that now? Now, it doesn't mean, I think I was sharing this with you last week, it doesn't mean they have no writings. It doesn't mean they didn't write anything. The, what we call the epistles were Paul's writing to his friends and partners. You understand what I'm talking about? He was writing to his friends and partners, just reminding them of, just like we do today, when friends gather, when we talk on the phone, we strengthen ourselves, we remind ourselves of the things God has done, the things we have learned of it. You, you should have friends like that. You spend hours and just talking about what the Lord is teaching you, what the Lord has taught you, reliving experiences with God. Now imagine putting those things in writing and sending it out. So there are lots of scriptures even today 
Many of us have written books. Those books are scriptures. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, because today, you see, we, we package books and we, we, we write them and sell them. Nah, 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 nah. But that's exactly what it is. That's exactly how we came about all these books. It is God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But here's the point. This book is... When, when you read this book, when you read the Bible, you come to this conclusion that this is a book of law. This is a book of law. From the beginning to the end, it starts from love and it ends with love. Praise God. Yes, I'm telling you the truth. Everything, the intent of every story in this book is to reveal the love of God. And that's the most powerful thing in the universe. I'm telling you the truth. The love of God. Why? Because God is love. Love is his character. Praise God. You want to know the character of God? It is love. You want to know what God's going to do tomorrow? He's going to love. Praise God. You want to know what God did yesterday? Yes, he loved. He's loving today. He will love tomorrow. He can't change from love. Praise God. Because he is love. That's the perfect description of God. God is love. And so when God wants to do something, he's doing it in love. He's doing it in love. Take love out of it. Uh, you, you find nothing else there. <laughs> Only the devil. Praise God. Because you take love out of it, you've taken God out of it. And when you're taking God out of it, what do you have left? See? And the Bible says, for example, where there's envy and strife, it says there is confusion and every evil work. Now, what does that tell you? Love is not there. <laughs> when, when there's strife, when there's envy, love is not there. And so when love is not there, it means God is not there. That's why I said there is confusion and every evil work. Another way to say that is there is the devil right there. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So God is love. I will share something. It's been in my spirit for uh, a few days now. And I just thought to share with you because that's how the Lord does, you know, with, with us. He just gets his word into our hearts and you just can't forget it. You are meditating on it day and night and, and just, it's just getting big inside you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. Now, last week I was sharing with you how God demonstrated his love to several people. And he never needed them to pre-qualify. Praise God. Now, now, I, you know, moving from there, I was just meditating on because I told you these things I share with you. It's not because oh, I've written them down. I want to share them with you. Now I know what God wants me to talk about, but even when I sit down here to talk about this thing, I trust Him for the now wisdom. See that, so I don't get it all written now. Okay, I'm going to share like I'm going to share like this. No, I know in my mind that's that's what we do when we prepare. Okay, Lord, I know this is what you want to talk to talk to me about. So I just present myself to you so that you communicate it properly. And sometimes you're just meditating on it and meditating on it, and then by the time I begin sharing. The Spirit of God even begins to take me in dimensions. I'm sharing these things and I'm like, ooh, ooh, praise God. Oh, what are we talking about? Praise God. But I love it because I know He's the one leader. I can see Him ahead of me leading the conversation. And so when I finish, I go back and say, Lord, what was that? That's new. Praise God. Wow. And then I begin to meditate on it and and, and it's growing big and big inside me, like, whoa. That's, that's how you get established in His Word. 
Praise God. So Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. Now watch this now. He says, I'm reading from the old King James. It says, for in Jesus Christ. Now take note of this. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which walketh by love. What's this say? He said, in Christ Jesus. Now, some of you may have heard me say things like this before. That there is no difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's just preachers and teachers who try to create a, a difference. <laughs> Praise God. Now, the Bible translators, in trying to differentiate, put that Old Testament and New Testament in the Bible. And some people take it so too far to start getting revelations on the word New Testament and getting revelations from the word Old Testament. But these are just for demarcation purpose. So they are writing, this. all this is before Jesus Christ came. And then all this is after Jesus Christ came. You see? But then some people begin to look for revelations concerning that. And then teachings have come up as a result of that. And most of these teachings get you more confused than, than, than make you experience God. So now Paul was speaking here and he says, for in Jesus Christ, when you come to Jesus Christ, circumcision means nothing. Uncircumcision means nothing. So whether you are circumcised or you are uncircumcised, it means nothing before Christ Jesus. Oh, because you're not circumcised, God cannot use you. No. No. Oh, because you are circumcised, that means you're keeping the law. So Jesus cannot use you. No. He says it means nothing. It means nothing. Then there is something that means everything. And what is that? It's a faith which walks or walk it. You know, normally English would say which walks by love. So what makes faith walk? Now I want you to understand this. He didn't just say circumcision or uncircumcision does not mean anything in Jesus Christ. But faith. He says no. The specific faith he is talking about is the one that works by love. Now, even Jesus said, have faith in God. Now, why did he say have faith in God? It's because you can have faith in any other thing. You can have faith in the devil. You can have faith in any other thing but God. But Jesus said, be deliberate about your faith. Have it in God. Now that's another way of saying, have faith in love. Because God is love. Are you following me? So now then, when he says, but faith which walketh by love. He's saying, the thing that walks this faith the thing that makes this faith real, the thing that makes this faith work. Now remember what faith is. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So faith's got substance. Faith has substance. Now, what is the substance of faith? It is that thing that is behind the faith. So now you see that some people, you know, when you fear something, you, you know, you say, oh, I, I, I'm afraid this is going to happen. I'm afraid that is going to happen. You, you, you've heard people sometimes, they say, hmm, the thing I'm scared about is I don't want to find myself in a situation and then this is going to happen. Now, what do you think they are doing? 
they are expressing faith in that thing they have heard or experienced. So what they are doing is believing in the substance. Oh, I don't want to take that kind of risk because I don't want to end up like so so and so person. You see, now they are expressing the substance of of things they have not seen by themselves. But now they have heard something. They have experienced something. So based on what they have experienced or heard, now they are now expressing faith. Now, faith for themselves in those things that they have heard. So why would someone say, I don't want to do this because I don't want to end up like this because they have heard how somebody ended up who attempted to do something like that. You see that now? So they are expressing faith or believing something. So when the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now there is the evidence. There is the evidence. What is the evidence in this case? The evidence in this case is the word or the experience in God. Now, I have not seen, I'm, I'm giving an example. I have not seen prosperity before, but I have heard that God blesses and prospers people. Okay, so what is the evidence? The evidence is what I have read concerning this person and this person and this person. Now, that thing I have read becomes substance. I want you to listen to me. It is now substance. So my mind is working on that substance. And because, hear me, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because my mind is working on that substance, I'm releasing faith. Now, if that substance is real, and the only thing that is real is God, <laughs> it's God. If that substance is real, then it will end up occurring again in my own life because it is substance now if that substance does not exist now this is why giving false testimonies is very dangerous because people now begin to have substance or believe they have substance when there is none you see because that thing substance is always words or experience See that now? So if that experience, if those words are false, it means that thing you are calling substance is false. So truly you don't have substance. It means you don't have faith. Are you getting what I'm sharing with you? Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Why? Why is the time just running so fast? Praise God. I, I want to finish this thing up. <laughs> My time is up. But hey, I'm going to continue from here tomorrow because you need to get this. It will help your life move in the direction that God wants it to go. So remember this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Now that is what faith is. Now, I'll close with this. You now have to be sure that your substance is real and not empty. Praise God. Father, I bless everyone today. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that your hand, your mighty hand is resting upon everyone that is watching and listening right now and causing them to experience your love like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise.
Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.